Good morning, everybody. It's Friday and it's nearly long weekend. So we thought we'd talk about, have a conversation about traveling with pets. But before we start, I just want to say, you know, by now I've got the two Yorkies, right? And my two Yorkies really don't travel well. They want to sit right here on my lap, nowhere else. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm driving like this and the Yorkies are in the way. So Megan, that's clearly not the right way no. to go about things, right? So what would be a better way? And, and really my, I've got Yorkies, they not really very teachable, right? So, and they also old enough to, um, to have learned that they're allowed on my lap. But now for those of you that haven't got your keys and that have actually got more, more um, discipline to train your dogs better, Megs, what would be the right way to go about traveling with pets? So the biggest thing with traveling with pets is that um, technically you're not supposed to have them running kind of loose in the car because there's always a risk of them if they panic or if you brake a little bit too hard. Yes. Um, they yeah. do turn into a kind of missile in your car and they will fly around and there's huge risk of them getting injured. Uh, specifically traveling with cats they tend to try and get under things which does include the brake pedals and um, oh. which can be disastrous <laughs> as you can imagine so what they often recommend with pets um, especially if they're first time traveling you know have someone sitting in the back with them if wherever possible and um, to try and comfort the pet you know to try and give them some love and just tell them that it's okay with the travel uh, if you don't have that as an option, uh, trying to find something to restrain the pet, they do have um, harnesses, harnesses now that clip into the seat belt. So yeah. it's almost like a pet seat belt. Uh, for some cats, they also do recommend having an actual tra travel, cat, travel uh, cat pit, traveling, yeah. um, what do you call it, crate, uh, which can be very comfortable for them. You know, they feel a lot safer there. You know, they're not kind of moving around as much in the car, which does obviously comfort them quite a bit. Uh, for some pets, they do suffer from car sickness. Uh, that unfortunately is a whole other ball game, and because that often happens when your puppy hasn't had enough kind of positive car experiences when they were young, so they actually become scared of traveling. Yeah, and it is. It's very daunting to put a little a little dog or a big dog in a car mm. suddenly, and they're not used to it. They they always and and I've learned this with my own dogs before I started taking them in the car on my lap, which is wrong. I know. Yes. Um, <laughs> that they they really associated with a bad experience because mm. think about it. We often take the dog somewhere, and that is to the vet, yes. when they're either going to have some kind of pain inflicted on them in the mm. way of they getting an injection, or they've hurt themselves and they need to be fixed up or stitched up and that's generally their association exactly. so it's then are you then saying it's about putting them in the car every now and again make them go on a fun outing take them out yeah. for a little walk and bring them back again exactly and you know you start off small you start off with little trips you know go to the nearest park to your house you know it doesn't really help if you have a nervous dog and you put them in the car for an hour and a half to take them for a fun walk uh, because by the time <laughs> they've arrived at the fun walk they are completely traumatized they will be hyperventilating and you know it's yeah it's it's really just best to try and get that positive association going also ignoring your dog when they panting and whining and crying in the back seat is it's very difficult but it is the right thing to do you do need to ignore them it's very similar to thunderstorms when your dog is scared of thunderstorms you need to just completely ignore them every now and then when they start settling down even a little bit give them a little bit of a treat you know give them a bit of a love and then get back to just you know it, pretending like they're not there basically Sure, and then again, the long weekend is coming up as I started yes. off. Um, if you are traveling with your pets, Meg, then um, you know long journeys, especially mm. from here to Durban, here to Cape Town, here to Bloemfontein, wherever we're allowed to go yes. now. Um, pets in the car, they always need regular stops. They need to Correct. have water. Make sure you've got enough little treats for them, and they and you've got their food in the car. Remember, it is a journey that they may not be used to, mm. so just soften up and be soft on them but don't be a monique and let them sit on your lap right yes and where possible as well it's not always you know especially in south africa our roads aren't the safest uh, but where possible traveling overnight is always best it reduces the chances of dogs suffering from heat stroke and it really doesn't take long for a dog to develop um, symptoms of heat stroke. It can take between 10 and 20 minutes. Sure, and so, we're not, we can discuss this in another one, yes. leaving cars and the, the dogs in the car and yeah. no. But, we, but traveling yes. to Durban and things where possible, try and travel as much as you can at night. It just reduces the stress on the animal. Um, it is just a lot cooler and makes it easier for you to do kind of longer stretches in between stops. Thank you. Yeah, so that's all we have time for. Have a super long weekend next weekend and travel safely and we'll be back next friday because we are not taking a long weekend <laughs> so for those of you that are home as well we're around mm -hmm. have a lovely day bye cheers everyone mm -hmm.